Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. Lots to talk about today with the Republican National Convention set to kick off in Milwaukee in less than a week. Speculation, of course, is soaring regarding who former President Donald Trump will name as his running mate and when he'll make the announcement. And believe me, when he does next week at in Milwaukee at the RNC, yours truly will be there to... Uh, to tell you all about it, give you all the details. Meanwhile, former UN ambassador and former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley is releasing all of her delegates to next week's Republican National Convention, urging them to support Donald Trump. We'll give you the details on that in just a moment as well. Over on the Democrat side, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer yesterday finally broke his silence on whether or not he supports President Joe Biden in the 2024 presidential race. And in the White House briefing yesterday, Peter Ducey with Fox News asked some very pointed questions on why President Biden doesn't just have additional medical tests and silence all the speculation. Ducey asked if they won't do this because they're afraid of the outcome of the test. Good question. From the New York Post, the competitive eating world has been rocked by hard-to-swallow claims that a contender in this year's Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest cheated to beef up his score. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth! Here's Joey Hudson. With the Republican National Convention ready to kick off next week, a lot of speculation, of course, is building as to who will be on the ticket. What's the ticket going to be named? Trump who? Trump question mark. As the former president is giving some hints, I think he really is enjoying the game, don't you? Uh, Trump on an appearance uh, on Fox News' is Hannity said, I'd love to do it during the convention. But Trump, in his Monday night interview with Hannity, added that my people say that's a little complicated. Probably a little before the convention, but not much. It could even be during the convention that we'd do it. Now, of course, it is a little more complicated because on Wednesday is traditionally when the vice presidential nominee uh, is nominated, number one. Secondly, that's when he or she gives their speech. So it's got to be sometime before Wednesday. Exactly when? Who knows? But uh, Trump is enjoying the game for sure. Uh, as for who he'll choose, Fox News' host Sean Hannity mentioned four names that are generally being considered these days. Senators Marco Rubio of Florida, J.D. Vance of Ohio, and, of course, Tim Scott from my home state of South Carolina, as well as North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. The former president, when being questioned, responded, the names that you mentioned, absolutely, they're under consideration. And he added that we have a lot of good people, as they call it. We have a great bench in the Republican Party. Now, that's different from what Trump said last month during a campaign stop in Philadelphia when he explained that he had made up his mind about who he would be uh, who he would choose for his running mate, but that he hadn't told that p- person that had been chosen. When asked if the person he had picked is aware, the former president responded, no, nobody knows. Uh, Trump, in his Fox News interview on Monday, said his running mate would be a person that can do a fantastic job as president, as well as somebody that helps you get elected, and there's nothing wrong with that. Trump, uh, back in May, of course, convicted of the 34 felony counts in New York in the first criminal trial in the nation's history of a former or current president. He uh, initially was going to be sentenced on the 11th. That, of course, has been delayed for a couple of reasons. Primarily, the judge had earlier 
agreed to delaying it until September as a result of the Supreme Court's decision on immunity. Some speculate that the charges could just uh, could just be dropped, could be could go away. Multiple sources in Trump's political world who have talked with Fox News, according to Fox, have shared various opinions on which contenders for VP are considered the front runners. But three names continue to come up, according to the report, and that's Bergam, Vance, and Rubio. North North Dakota Doug Bergam, by some, is the favorite. J.D. Vance, very high-profile U.S. senator, probably the next favorite. Marco Rubio, probably the third among them. Uh, Rubio is, was set to do an evening campaign event with Trump last night at his Durrell Golf Club near Miami, Florida. Meanwhile, as I mentioned, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who ran, of course, against Trump and consistently received about 20% of the vote in the early primaries, released her delegates for next week for the national uh, RNC, urging them to support former President Trump. Haley said in a statement, the nominating convention is a time for Republican unity. I encourage my delegates to support Donald Trump next week in Milwaukee. Uh, Again, Haley was sort of the last person standing in the primaries as the other candidates had suspended their campaigns uh, even before the race made its way to South Carolina. Haley launched, launched her presidential campaign in February of last year, becoming the first major candidate to challenge Trump. Uh, of course, this after she had pledged that she would not challenge Trump. Uh, Haley announced that she was suspending her White House campaign on March the 6th, the day after Trump swept 14 of the 15 states in Super Tuesday. As she departed the race, Haley made it clear that she intended to keep speaking out, and she has. She has still continued to travel the country, making speeches. Uh, And again, like I said, she grabbed about 20% of the vote overall. Meanwhile, former President Trump yesterday accused Democrats of shielding President Biden's cognitive abilities and of engaging in the biggest cover-up in political history. Trump made the uh, argument during a campaign rally in Doral, Florida. Again, Marco Rubio was at the rally with him. Uh, in his first in 11 days as the presumptive Republican nominee for president, has watched a growing number of Democrats call for Joe Biden to drop out of the race. This, of course, after the disastrous June 27th debate. The former president said Joe Kamala and the entire Democrat establishment have been caught red-handed in the thick of the biggest scandal and the biggest cover-up. It's a cover-up, and that's what it is, he said. I said it when they hid this guy in the basement. It's the biggest cover-up in political history, he went on to say. And he's right. I mean, uh, as you will hear a little bit later in today's show, in yesterday's press conference, White House Press Secretary Jean-Pierre, Corinne Jean-Pierre, was asked by Fox News' Peter Ducey why the president didn't just have a a cognitive test and have a thorough uh, examination by the White House doctor because the White House doctor is right there. Uh, She made the point that the doctor is on call 24-7. Joe Biden has better doctor's care than any of us, anybody in the world. So why couldn't he just stumble down the hall, pun intended, and have the White House doctor examine him and put the world at ease. He either has cognitive issues or he doesn't. It should be just that simple. Trump uh, was joined yesterday, as I said, uh, Senator Mark, by Senator Marco Rubio. Former president called Rubio a friend of mine, despite the this is 2016 GOP presidential primary cycle when Rubio had not two kind of words for Trump. Remember that when there was like what 15 candidates in that initial uh, in that in the initial group in the primaries. Trump suggested that the reporters covering his rally had expected him to announce Rubio as his vice president. See, this is what I'm saying. He's playing with everybody. Trump 
purposely had Marco Rubio at the rally last night because he knows that there's speculation that Rubio is one of the people being considered as his vice presidential choice. So he's kind of playing with the media by having these guys show up at these events because the media thinks, well, this could be it. This is when he's going to make the big announcement. That's what everybody was saying yesterday. Well, he didn't, and he probably won't. And it may not even be one of the three because Donald Trump has the ability to pull surprises out of his hat. He likes to do that. Wouldn't surprise me if it's somebody that we're not even talking about right now, someone who's not even on the short list. He, uh, he, he quipped during the appearance Rubio may or may not be in the Senate to vote his proposed legislation to eliminate taxes on tips in 2025. Again, just toying with everybody. What do you think? Who's your pick? Who do you think he's going to choose? Send me a quick text message or send me an email, joey at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with PhD weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your, your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today 864-252-4925 set up your initial consultation with phd weight loss and nutrition boy am i glad that i met dr ashley lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy you're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again uh, play with the kids the grandkids be able to to hike and and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18 round uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded because when you take that excess weight off you're just going to feel better you're going to be able to focus you're going to be able to sleep better your overall health is just going to be improved 864-252-4925 call set up your initial consultation find them online at myphdweightloss.com phd weight loss and nutrition the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Continuing today's show, glad to have you in. Things got a little feisty in the White House press briefing yesterday between Fox News's Peter Ducey and the White House press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre. I got that coming up for you in just a minute. First, let me get you updated on the many text messages yesterday. Jennifer wrote, welcome back. The world was on fire before you left. It's just hotter now. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm glad that uh, I was missed a bit last week when I was uh, off on the Patriots Alaska cruise. She wrote, Lindsey Graham says that Trump should consider Glenn Youngkin for vice president. He said he could win Virginia that way, and if we win Virginia, we win. Maybe Youngkin could also add votes from the we need some younger people in Washington crowd, Jennifer says. Says, however, all things being equal, my preferred choice remains Doug Burgum. I think he's highly qualified and he would be ready for eight years following under Trump, following the four under Trump. But my first priority is to win, all caps. Above everything else, we must win. Losing is devastation. What do you think about all of that? I think you're dead on it, uh, uh, Jennifer. And it wouldn't surprise me. If, uh, if Doug Burgum, your choice, isn't Donald Trump's choice as well. Faye writes on the text line, well, there's been a lot of uproar about the Bidens. Guess he's no longer a useful idiot for the Democrats. And if they plan to skip cackles, well, good luck. They are, they are in a, p- a pickle, aren't they, as we say. They're in a rock, uh, rock between a hard place. What's, it, what's the saying? Uh, I mean, a, between a rock and a hard, between a rock and a hard place. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, with, with Kamala, though. Because they can't just toss her to the side. They know that she's a worse candidate than Joe Biden. But what do they do with her? She believes that she's the heir apparent. And there's a lot of Democrats over the past couple of weeks with all the speculation of Joe Biden potentially leaving the race who agree, who say that they would support Kamala Harris if Joe Biden drops out of the race. Uh, Faye goes on to write, but it seems Hunter is standing in the gap already unreal joy we are happy that you're safely back in south carolina well thank you Faye. i appreciate that it is a little weird after all the trouble 
that Hunter has been in that he's hanging around the White House now, actually being in involved in some of the, the meetings. Now, we don't know what kind of meetings they were. I mean, what we know is what some of the White House staffers have leaked, and they're not happy having Hunter around the White House. But we don't know. Uh, and, and according to Jean-Pierre, and I'm going to share with you a little bit later, uh, she claims after Peter Ducey asked her, if Hunter has access to classified documents, she claims the answer is no. But we, we know how that goes, too, don't we? Michael writes on the text line, in regards to answering prearranged questions, I think if investigating would be done every interview that Joe Biden has done, the questions have been prearranged. So that's a lot of people getting fired. I think you're probably right. I think it's probably a common practice for the White House. And think about it. So the president wants to be on your radio show or your TV show or your, your podcast, and they send you over some suggested questions, most people aren't going to push back on that. Wouldn't go, go over too well with Fox. Wouldn't go over too well with Newsmax or One America News Network. But most people, they'd probably just think it's a, that it's an honor to have Joe Biden on the show anyway, so they wouldn't care. Uh, Jeff says, Glad you're back. Hope you had a great trip. Thanks for everything you do for keeping us informed. Well, thank you, Jeff. Again, I, uh, I missed being out last week. I uh, loved the, the cruise though. We had a great time. Great time. There's, uh, some other than politics. There's also a lot being said about the, <laughs> and I, and I, when I see these headlines, and this is from the New York Post, that there's a literally a a real problem, a real scandal brewing in the Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest. There's accusations of cheating. Here's what happened: Nick Wiry, husband of women's division champion Miko Sudo, is being accused of using sleight of hand trickery during the July 4th contest in order to inflate his tally of eating hot dogs and falsely place himself among the sport's elite contenders, according to two sources closely involved in the competition and talking with the New York Post. The source told the Post 100% he cheated. On the day of the competition, Wiry's score was a respectable 46.75 hot dogs when they called it out at Coney Island. Good enough for a fourth-place finished at that time, according to footage and other reports, including the New York Post. But that figure later jumped to 51.75 on the official Major League Eating Results website, allegedly giving him credit for five full wieners more than he was actually served during the competition, according to sources inside the competition. Eater scores, according to the Post, is t- are tabulated based on the number of empty plates stacked in front of their spot after the allotted time has concluded. Any debris left uneaten, like parts of buns or, or chunks of beef, uh, is subject to the judge's determination about whether or not they should deduct from their grand total. Evidently, uh, every plate on the competition table starts out loaded with five hot dogs. So each plate left behind counts for five hot dogs eat, eaten, as the judges determined the participant's score. Wiry has been accused of stealing plates from another competitor stack and putting them on his own place, setting to raise his score above 50, which is considered a threshold separating everyday competitors from the sport's true top dogs. Or maybe we should say top dog eaters. Although the alleged score uh, inflation didn't improve Wiry's standing, it did bump him above that magic 50 figure, uh, 50 figure, of, according to the New York Post. Another source said, and was quoted, there's a number of people who have eaten 40 hot dogs in this competition before. There's a lot fewer who have eaten more than 50 and even fewer who have eaten over 60. For someone to have on the record that they ate more than 50 makes you part of a very small elite club of competitive eaters. Now, I guess this is a big deal. I don't know. But I'm not quite sure why you, why it's such a big deal <laughs> to be on a list of eating over 50 hot dogs. Is, is there a prize involved in this? Are these guys paid? 
Uh, let's see here. E- evidently, yes, there is money involved. Uh, Patrick Bertoletti was considered this year's champ. He ate 58 hot dogs and buns in the 10 minute, uh, time, uh, time limit, defeating 13 competitors for the title and make, taking home a prize of $10,000. Look, if I ate 58 hot dogs, it, it would cost more than $10,000 probably to get me out of the hospital. Cause I don't think I'd be walking. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at discounted appliance warehouse with over 11,000 square feet and 1500 appliances at any any given time you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at discounted appliance warehouse and Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens, Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there. They'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. As the Democrats are still scurrying around trying to decide what to do with their potential nominee in just a few weeks. Uh, Joe Biden is making phone calls, pressing congressional leaders to get in line, to stand behind him. As you probably know, over this past weekend, a number of Democrat congressional leaders spoke out saying that they thought it was time for Joe Biden to step aside, to let someone else be the nominee, someone who might have a better chance of beating Donald Trump come November. Now, of course, all the speculation is that someone would have to be Kamala Harris, who actually is doing worse in the polls than Joe Biden. And that's a real dilemma for Democrats, Democrats who want to win. Now, there are certain Democrats who just believe that it's her, that she's the automatic heir apparent. So many of them who have spoken out by saying they think that it's time for Joe Biden to step step aside have said that they, yes, they'll support the president if he ultimately decides to stay in the race, but they also immediately people like South Carolina Congressman Jim Clyburn, who is given a lot of credit for being the kingmaker. It's widely acknowledged that Jim Clyburn is the reason Joe Biden is sitting in the Oval Office. Now we can blame our congressman from South Carolina, James Clyburn for the mess we're in. Because he's the one, Joe Biden was dead in the water and and came to South Carolina for the South Carolina Democrat primary and with James Clyburn's help was able to secure the nomination. Clyburn suggested that maybe Biden needs to reconsider whether he's going to run. But he's also been very clear that if Biden were to make that decision, that he would throw his support behind Kamala Harris. Now, I I ask you, who would you rather Donald Trump run against? Because we know for sure Donald Trump is going to be the nominee. Next next week, I'll be in Milwaukee at the Republican National Convention. I'll give you all the latest updates. And we know Donald Trump's going to be the nominee. So the question is, Who's going to be the Democrat nominee? Is it really going to be Joe Biden? Will he release his delegates? He's defiant. Joe Biden continuously says he's going to stay on the race. He's going to stay on the ballot. He's feverishly been making phone calls and trying to whip the Democrat leadership in the Congress, in the U.S. House, and the U.S. Senate to fall in behind him. One voice who had been somewhat silent was that of Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Well, he's silent no more. Yesterday, he broke his silence on whether or not he supports President Biden 
in this 2024 presidential race. In a statement, Schumer said uh, that, as I've said before, I'm with Joe. He was asked the question, are you confident that President Biden has what it takes to win in November and serve the next four years? That seemed to be the question of the day because that question was also asked by Peter Ducey in the White House press briefing yesterday of Jean-Pierre. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But Schumer saying yes, that he stands behind Joe. Until now, Schumer had been silent. He had refused to comment on Biden's poor presidential debate performance against Trump just last, just a few weeks ago. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre yesterday said that Biden's comments about his health being fine, it's just my brain, was a lighthearted joke. Now, he made this comment when he was speaking to uh, on a phone call with congressional leaders. And with, uh, I think, specifically with a group of Democrat governors who visited with uh, with the president last week. And he said, I'm I'm in perfect. I'm in perfect health. It's just my brain. Well, that that, the brain is the part that we want. uh, We want to be for sure is is working. Right. Corrine Jean-Pierre yesterday just kind of laughed that off. She said that it was a lighthearted joke. The comment came in response to Fox News' Peter Ducey referencing the president's comment that his health is fine, but it's just his brain and that he's sharp as before. Ducey led with a question of whether the president will commit to serving a full four-year term if reelected, and Ducey also pressed Jean-Pierre on whether the first lady is now making a lot of the decisions. Here's the exchange. Thank you, Green. Does President Biden commit to serving a full second term if Reelected. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we know the president says that his health is fine, mm-hmm. but it's just his brain, and that he's sharpest before. He, he was joking, by the way. I just want to make sure that that's out there. And people, What's the people, pe- he was making a lighthearted joke as he was that speaking off. He was spe- he's speaking off the cuff and he was making a joke. You know the president. He likes to joke a lot. Okay. He's the same guy who says, "I know I look forty, right?" So he likes I to make joke. jokes. It is a joke. He, okay. I think people laugh when he says it. Well, so he it also said he's, he's sharpest before 8 p.m. So say that the Pentagon at some point picks up an incoming nuke. It's 11 p.m. Who do you call? The first lady? He has a team that uh, lets him know of any of any news that is pertinent and important to the American people. Uh, he has someone or that is decided, obviously, with his National Security Council on who uh, gets to tell him that news. So Kevin McCarthy just said that when he was the speaker, many times when we had meetings in the Oval Office, Jill was there as well. When the First Lady's in these meetings, is she making decisions or is she no. just advising the president? No, the president is the president of the United States. He makes decisions. So why is the First Lady even in the meetings? Is there any reason that you can think of that Jill Biden should be in some of these official White House meetings? Why why is the first lady in there if she's not there to help maybe take notes so that she can help recall what was actually said in the meeting later? Also, it's been reported that Hunter Biden has also been joining some of them uh, in on some of the meetings that he joined the first lady in sitting in on meetings with the president and staff. This supposedly happened when the Biden family returned from Camp David. Ducey asked specifically if Hunter has access to classified information. Another family member, President Biden has told me before, he and his son don't have any business dealings together. So what is Hunter Biden doing in White House meetings? Are you talking about the meeting where they came together from Camp David and the two of them walked to the president's meeting and he was there? There's a report that aides were struck by his presence during their discussions. Look, I can't, I'm, I'm certainly not going to get into uh, private conversations that, are, that occur. What I can say is, and I talked to this, I spoke to this before, is that uh, when they came back from Camp David, the president spent a, a couple of days at Camp David with his family. Uh, he is very close to your, his family, as you know. It was the week of Fourth of July, which is why his family members were here last week. They walked together, and they walked together into uh, the meeting. Can you say if Hunter Biden has access to classified information? No. So, according to Jean Pierre, Hunter does not have access to classified information. I got a question for you. Do you think 
Daddy Joe would even know <laughs> if little Hunter was snooping around in his classified documents to begin with? Why, in under any scenario, is Hunter Biden even involved in any of these meetings in the White House, knowing his background, knowing that his business is selling access to his father, and he's allowed in the White House? Ducey went on and pressed the White House press secretary on why President Biden hasn't had an additional checkup with all the speculation on Biden's health. Why not just go ahead and, and have another checkup? You've got the doctors right there. John Pierre's already said, made a big point out of the fact that he has the best health care in, in the world, that he has his only doctor, his own doctor right there in the White House. So why wouldn't you go ahead and have a cognitive test, have whatever test that his doctor thinks he should have to quiet all of the rumblings, to quiet all of the speculation of his dementia. Why wouldn't you do that and just settle it? Well, I suspect because, as Peter Ducey is suggesting, they don't want to know the answer, or they know it, and they don't want us to know the answer. Here's uh, Ducey pressing Jean-Pierre on why the president doesn't go ahead and get another checkup. Not a doctor, just no. play one on TV. Uh, but I know that scary. that is scary. <laughs> but I know that, especially as adults get into their 80s, health conditions can pop up more than just once a year when he's getting his physical. I think if my wife saw me on TV misspeaking or saying the wrong thing or yeah. seeing a change in my appearance, she would probably say, let's go to a doctor just to make sure that you are okay, you have a family, you have an important job. Why doesn't anybody in the president's family urge him just to go to get checked out to say the coast is clear? Okay, so just to step back just a little bit, because I think you weren't in the briefing room last week. I, I, I don't want to go backwards, but just to share a little bit about that night. The president said it was a bad night. Uh, he talked about it. He had a, a cold, right? He talked about his schedule, right, uh, being abroad. Uh, and so we've spoke about what that night was like for him. And we understand what the American people saw, what you all saw, we've spoken to that. And I also would say, uh, and I think you know this, Peter, you've, you've covered a couple of administration at this point, administrations at this point, that the president, every president, has a White House medical unit uh, that is with him 24-7, that is available to him 24-7, that is unlike any other American, right? That is not the norm, that is uncommon. Just down on the other side of the colonnade is where the medical unit is. Uh, and I did share in the, that uh, the president checks in while he's exercising with his doctor on a couple times a week. So if he has such great care, why not go ahead and, and have the cognitive test? Wouldn't that be the easiest thing to do? Let the doctor examine him and publish the results. Let you and me know. You agree? Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. It doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. You remember during the debate a few weeks ago between Trump and Biden, at one point, probably one of the most interesting exchanges in the debate was when they started bragging about their golf handicap. <laughs> when, when Trump said that uh, Biden probably couldn't even hit the ball 50 yards, the 50 yards is not very far. I'm not that great of a golfer, and I hit it 50 yards. We all know that Biden probably doesn't do well out on the golf course. 
but typical Joe Biden, he's not to be outdone. He kind of challenges Trump. He says, yeah, I'll play you, but you got to carry your own bag. As if Joe Biden could carry a golf bag for 18 holes. Joe Biden probably couldn't even carry a golf bag out of the White House into to, to load it into his car, let alone carry it for 18 holes. We all know that. I mean, it, it was just crazy that Biden said such a thing. Well, and I knew this was coming. I'm surprised it, it didn't uh, didn't take up more time that night. Uh, after this heated discussion about their golf handicaps, and, and Joe's talking about, you know, that one point he said he had a six handicap, another time he said he had, had an eight handicap. Well, at his rally last night in Doral, at, at Doral Country Club in Florida, South Florida, Donald Trump officially challenged Joe Biden to a golf match and even offered a $1 million prize uh, or donation to a charity of Biden's choice if Biden is able to beat him. Here's the exchange. I'm also officially challenging Cricket Joe to an 18-hole golf match right here. Under Al's Blue Monster, considered one of the greatest tournament golf courses anywhere in the world, one of the great courses of the world. It will be among the most watched sporting events in history. Maybe bigger than the Ryder Cup or even the Masters. And I will even give Joe Biden 10 strokes to side. 10 strokes, that's a lot. That means 20 strokes in case you don't play golf. I will give him 10 strokes to side. And if he wins, I will give the charity of his choice, any charity that he wants, $1 million. All right, so what kind of wagers are out there? Who do you think is going to win a potential golf match between Joe Biden and Donald Trump? Anybody going to bet on Joe Biden? Biden spokesperson James Singer fired back after the press asked him about Trump's challenge. In a statement, he said, Donald Trump hasn't been seen in public for 12 days. Now he's inviting fictional serial killers to dinner, teasing little Marco Rubio, praising Project 2025 architect Tom Holman, and challenging the president of the United States to golf. We challenged Donald Trump to create jobs, but he lost $3 million. We challenged Donald Trump to stand up to Putin, but he bent the knee to him. We challenged Donald Trump to follow the law, but he breaks it. We challenged Donald Trump to not destroy our country, but that's all his Project 2025 aims to do. Joe Biden doesn't have time for Donald Trump's weird antics. He's busy leading America and defending the free world. Donald Trump is a liar, a convict, and a fraud, only out for himself, par for the course. I think there was probably a pun intended there. Now, let's kind of dissect that. Uh, They're always talking about the jobs that Joe Biden has created and the jobs that Donald Trump lost. Now you do have to remember that Donald Trump, the last year of his presidency was the COVID plague. We were, we were in a pandemic, nothing like we'd seen in a hundred years. So yes, there were millions of jobs lost, but how many jobs had Donald Trump created prior to, to COVID raising its ugly head. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about what the cost of a gallon of gasoline was under Donald Trump. And they don't want Trump talking about what a gallon of gasoline costs you now under Joe Biden. And and you just go through their list. (laughs) When they say that Joe Biden is busy leading America, give me a break. The guy can hardly stay awake. I mean, it's already uh, it's already been announced that his work schedule is pretty much 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. or so. The golf discussion, perhaps, uh, was probably one of the most interesting exchanges during their June 27th debate. It came after Trump said that he had won two club championships when discussing fitness while adding Biden couldn't drive a ball 50 yards. Again, Biden alleged that he had a that he had gotten his golf handicap down to a six as vice president. Later, he corrected that to an eight. So we're not sure which it was. I doubt that it was either. 
I doubt that Joe Biden has ever had a handicap as low as even eight, let alone six. Again, I love to play golf. I'm not that good. Uh, To have an eight handicap is pretty remarkable. To have a six handicap is even more remarkable, especially when you see old man Joe stumbling around today. Trump, though, you see him playing golf all the time. He's an avid golfer. He wasn't buying it. Trump, during the debate, said that's the biggest lie, that he's a six handicap of all. Trump's handicap has been recorded as low as 2.5. I don't know what it is, but I do know I've seen him hit the ball, and I do know that Donald Trump could easily beat Joe Biden in a golf match. Easily. Joe Biden, I doubt Joe Biden could even play 18 holes using a cart. He certainly couldn't carry his bag for 18 holes. The debate on golf handicaps may not ever be settled, but reigning U.S. Open champion Bryson DeChambeau offered to kind of help settle this. He uh, he hopes the two will play. He said, let's settle this whole handicap debate. I'll host the golf match on my YouTube channel. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be crazy to see these two? Would you rather, rather than having a second debate, would you be open to to Donald Trump and Joe Biden playing a, a round of golf? W- would you take Joe Biden up on his uh, with his chest poked out, puffed up? Would you take his challenge? Do we need another debate? I, I honestly, I think I'd rather see Joe Biden try to play a round of golf I, because I know Donald Trump's going to beat him. And you think, well, this is a very serious thing. We're talking about president of the United States. I I recognize that. But Joe Biden is such a joke anyway. Why not let him get out on the golf course? If he's concerned about Donald Trump carrying his own bag, I I would bet my money's on Donald Trump that he could carry his own bag for 18 holes and no problem. Again, I don't think Joe Biden could could make it through 18 holes of golf. I don't know that Joe Biden can make it through 18 holes of putt-putt. Maybe, maybe that's where they should start. Maybe Trump should lessen the, the mark a bit there and challenge him to a round of putt-putt. They could maybe have it like down at Myrtle Beach in one of those big fancy putt-putt things where they have, you know, all the animals and, and the trick shots and all. Play a round of putt-putt. That, that's probably more in Joe Biden's league, you think? Maybe Biden could could endure, persevere, and play a full round of putt putt. <laughs> Again, I understand this is a serious thing. We're talking about the president of the United States that we're about to choose, but this is how low things have gotten. That that the two men are arguing about their golf handicap. I'd love to know. I'd love to see Joe. I'd love to just see Joe Biden hit one off the tee, tee box. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of just the truth to some friends just click on the share button send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in november we got to build an army of conservatives the way we beat joe biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth hey keep those comments coming via the firm and ford text line 864-477-JOEY 864-477-5639 your emails always welcome as well joey at joeyhudson.com don't forget to take advantage of the my pillow special 25 dollars for the my towels six piece towel set when you use promo code joey just go to mypillow.com always use promo code joey we're back again tomorrow hope you will be too remember god's got this he's still in control